with the sampler, you can really get as crazy as you want to get with this thing. So just for your information, it's very easy to take this and to create different velocity layers. Like we saw with that multi-sampled oboe we were looking at earlier, you can create the exact same thing. You just choose the velocity values. You can also layer different samples on top of each other. So maybe with the bowed symbol, you want to have a harp sound. You could drop a harp sound on and have it cover the exact same ranges. And as long as you set that root key up properly, everything should sound good from a harmonic standpoint. And even if it doesn't, maybe you stumble upon something even cooler. It may not be harmonious, but if it sounds cool, it is cool. So you can go with that. So definitely go in and explore. You don't have to keep it this simple if you don't want to, or you can keep it this simple. It's really up to you. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add in some drums using the sampler. And I'm not going to go over that process again of dragging and dropping things in, but I do want to just draw your attention to the difference between using something like a drum machine and just dragging and dropping samples on. Both ways are completely okay, but if I'm just dragging and dropping samples on, you know, I'm going to have to go in here and kind of zoom in manually and get this all to fit according to plan. Whereas with the sampler, I can have just one MIDI track going. And that's what I've already gone ahead and set up here. So if I go in, you can see that I have all of my instruments just kind of set to these locations. So I have my kick drum here, have my snare, etc. So you can go in and you can manually adjust things. Like for example, if I don't want the, the kick to just cut off immediately, I can increase this a little bit. And I've already done that with um, the shaker sound, I think, as well. You can see I've added some additional release to that. So if I want to add a new drum sound onto this, it would be really easy. I could just go in here and pick any old sound. Let's see if we get something really interesting. Do we have any cymbals in here? We have a cowbell. Oh, we do have a crash. So if I have a crash... I like that tape one the best. I can just drag this. I'm going to close this down so that's just on the one note. And then I'm going to bring this guy over here so that we're now sitting on the A1. So I have that in. And right now it's going to just cut off immediately if I hit the note. So I'm going to want to increase the release. I'll bring it up all the way so it plays the whole thing. And then I'll go in and just add that. Let's see, which one note is that? I think it's this one. And I'll just bring that in like so. So we can take a listen to what I have. You can also see all of the velocity adjustments that have been made. So here we go. If I want to bring the volume up on that, I'm going to have to go in, select it, and bring up the volume down here but surely there must be a better way to do this and there must be a way where we can control these samples a little bit more each of these individually and lo and behold there is a way to do that normally this is why you would say well isn't just dragging and dropping the audio clip better because i can go in here and i can manually add as many plugins as i want and yeah that would normally be true except we can if we want break all of these samples out onto their own individual tracks and so i kind of already set it up in this program already I'll start over just so you can see the way this works. Inside of this program, when you have a plugin that has multiple outputs, it will give you these two little arrows here and you'll be able to configure them like so. This is an instance where you really will need to consult your manual or search on YouTube like multi-out plugins. You might be able to search something like contact multi-out and then followed by your DAW's name, and somebody will configure it, and it would work exactly the same with um, this plugin as well. So I'm just gonna go to Add Missing Chains, so they're now all, all on here, and then I just need to go back into the plugin and route these out, and I have these different channel options here. So if I go to the kick drum, I can choose the channel out, and I'm gonna put that on mono one, okay? If I go to the snare sound, of course, these are not ordered perfectly. I'm going to put that onto mono two. I can go to this hat sound. I can put that onto mono three. And go to the shaker, put that onto mono four. And then I'm going to go to the crash sound and I'm going to put that onto mono five. Or I actually might want, this might be a stereo sample, so I'll put that onto stereo number seven and eight. So now as I play this back. <laughs> Thank you. 
you can see that they're all going to these individual channels that have been set up here. And then I'd want to go in here and rename these. So I won't go through the whole process of renaming them, but what I can do now at least is I can get the balances that I want. Like that and when we start to get into effects processing you'll see how useful this can really be because with each of these channels i can add individual plugins onto these and so i can process the sounds individually as opposed to having to process the entire drum machine as a whole but what's the benefit of this i could also choose to process the entire drum machine as a whole because these are just nested inside of this main track so when you watch me playing this if i want to bring down the overall level of the drum machine I have the ability to do it. 